to the All Access Show. Basically, we bring to you the exclusive events and happenings that happen in the county, all around Kenya and the rest of the world, only on TV47, the home of untold stories. As you can see in my hand, I am holding wine. We are at the wine tasting event where we are finally crowning the Sommelier Cup winner of 2019 from Kenya and basically he or she will be representing Kenya in Cape Town South Africa this year in September where nine different uh, countries and participants will be representing their countries to hopefully crown somebody who is a true pro West and professional at choosing wines pairing it with different foods and occasions and experiences for the wines so for example I am currently drinking Shiraz but Bushman's had a state and we hope to actually speak to the importer or producer of this particular wine later on in this day's event we've got the, the mood is ecstatic and um, if you've never been to Cape Town before there are various things to look out for and we here at TV 47 will actually cover the event for you now if you're not particularly keen about going to Cape Town in South Africa right here in Kenya we've got Leleshwa which is actually a destination where you can view wines you can go to the vineyards and they will take you through the whole experience of wine tasting the whole sensory taste of wine the sight the smell the hearing the touch and the taste of wine as it's seen so stay tuned as we get to see more about this Wines of South Africa event this year. Hello, good evening. My name is Edgar Adoli from South African Airways, Nairobi. Uh, we are here today in this Wines of South Africa event as South African Airways. We are the flag bearers of South Africa, so any South African brand doing a show in Nairobi, we always come on board to give support because this is also good for our corporate market. We usually target leisure and holiday uh, and, and business uh, corporate flyers. And being the flag bearer of uh, South Africa, we are here always to market our destinations and usually when we have big events like this that are being done by any South African entity, we come in in support to usually give out goodies like tickets. Everything is just flowing. Everybody, as you know, it's South African wine, so everybody's in a good mood. What I can say, it is super fragilistic, ethically docious. In the finals in Cape Town, especially, what they should really look out, especially for the wine tours into the wine yards, that is going to be out of their minds. It's going to be spectacular. So my name is Judy Ngene, I'm the CEO of Galina Agencies and we are wine importers. We import wine from South Africa and all over the world, so we bring the best of the best. I also have, happen to have some certificates from uh, the wine tasting, so at least I'm able to use that to choose the wines that we bring in. Um, I guess my personal favorite is uh, Women in Wine and that's what I'm having right now, it's a Shiraz 2017. So uh, what got us to work or partner with these guys is they actually focus on the women in wine in South Africa. So what they do is it's um, a very male dominated industry in South Africa because most of the people who are producers in South Africa are men. So the few women who produce wine in South Africa came together and opened an, uh, an organization, an association where they make wine together and then try and promote their wines outside of South Africa. So we were like, you know what, why not? Uh, Galina is actually a women in wine company in Kenya. So we were like, let's support one of our own, promote the initiative and also promote other women in wine in Kenya. So yeah, that's why we got this wine here. This also now puts us in the map because we have a Kenyan winner in the finals of Kenya and they'll be able to compete with other contestants from all over the world. And hopefully our winner will be able to be crowned the official Somalia 2019 and we are rooting for him yeah yeah so for also for, as a company you know once we're on the map as I said we're importers we'll be able to promote premium wines 
in Kenya as uh, Kenya right now is the fastest growing wine market we have in the world so that's why all these people are ready to invest in Kenya so I actually um, tell guys to come out buy wine we have good quality wine so you know don't be shy wine is what you feel it is don't always listen to this guy has said the wine must taste chocolatey or whatever like you have your own palate so trust your palate and whatever the wine tells you feel it and that's that's it for you for us we go for quality and there are very few wine importers who actually study wine and that's why as the CEO I task myself with going for some of these certificates so I've done two certificates from Wasa and at least I'm able to choose my wine according to the taste of Kenya so in Kenya Kenya is a sweet market so I also try and look for uh, sweet wines something that will be a fast mover and then also not forgetting the people who actually know their wine and they know what they want to buy so I'd be able to get a premium a very good premium wine and one of those is actually from Bushman's Pad Estate he's one of our partners we import from him and he has very top premium wines yeah hopefully you'll be able to have a look at those when you pass by our stand yeah you've talked to one of your partners how many partners do you have uh, as a whole and do you only have partners from South Africa or are they from all over the world well we have partners from all over the world uh, in total I think there are probably nine because uh, we went uh, shopping for wine partners people with good wine so from South Africa so far we have four and this, uh, that's Orange River Cellars of course women in wine we have Bushman's Pad Estate we have the wet shop uh, we have uh, we have from Netherlands we have Country Lane it's a cream liqueur we also have three monkeys from Spain it's very interesting beginner level but very good wine we have from Italy Vinum and them they concentrate on organic wine so yeah we have we have our portfolio is quite large changing from an important source of nutrition to a cultural complement to food and compatibility with a healthy lifestyle As an enduring cultural symbol of fine life, the role of wine has evolved over time. Good evening, Lucy. My name is Menno Skousma. I am for origin, from origin, I'm Dutch. And since 25 years, I'm a wine owner of a wine estate in South Africa that I started from scratch uh, because I saw the potential of South African wines and especially the terroir and the opening up of the market after the political situation changed. The good thing about this is that we were able to improve the wine industry by bringing the latest technology in there. And nowadays South African wines can compete with the best wines in the world. Um, I'll show you my wine. It is Bushman Spot. Bushman Spot wine. This is our logo. Our logo is the Bushman, which refers to the traditional inhabitants of the country, which we still have respect for. And my farm Bushman spot is called because the Bushman at the time moved over from the Karoo desert area on the other side of our mountain range over the mountain for their copper hats that they could buy there because they needed them for the hunting. So there is a real history, history on this farm. I am proudly uh, uh, presenting my products to Kenya at this show and I'm happy that we have the chance that an African product can be sold in another African country because I think that Africa should focus on their other neighbors and other countries in the continent to produce a market where they benefit each other because too many products from Europe are here on the shelves while the products from South Africa and other countries are staying a little bit underdeveloped. That is my message I give to the people in Kenya, buy the products from South Africa and maybe it will uh, reach out that the Kenya coffee gets better sold in South Africa because I noticed that the Kenya coffee is a beautiful product. I really enjoyed drinking coffee here. Thank you. Well, wine is probably one of the oldest products in the world, produced since about 10,000 years before Christ because people discovered what you could do with grapes. But I think Africa stayed for a long time out of it. Only when they got contact with the Western world, they were introduced to wine, but it was mo probably more the people who were trying to govern these countries at the time, which is another history, historical fact that maybe <laughs> doesn't fit in this program, but wine was brought with the white people coming to, to Africa. Uh, I think that the African people should discover wine by themselves, and they should be educated 
and it, it's up to you like this program to show people the quality of wine and also the health benefit of wine it is it is proven that if you take two glasses of wine preferably even red wine a day it keeps the doctor away and it's it lowers cholesterol it chills you it may take some stress away from you those are things that are really important and the all good thing about wine is it's a natural product the way it's it's produced is by natural yeast the alcohol that is in it is let's say less body resistant than the alcohol from heavier drinks like whiskey and brandy that has the body takes a lot of effort to filter it out of the system so wine is really a health product unless you drink it too much but that is in life with everything the things you do too much in life are not good for you time now for a short break don't go away hi there and welcome again so we've got with me Sam Dishu from Urban Wine House who is the winner and has been crowned the master sommelier. Basically we'd love to find out from him how long he's been tasting wines and what exactly there is to know about wine tasting and what it means to be going to have the opportunity to actually go down to South Africa later on this year in September. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Great, so how does it feel to be the winner of today's sommelier cup? Um, it's a roller coaster of emotions, I'm shocked, I'm uh, happy, I'm uh, pinch me, is it real? Uh, but overall it's a humbling experience just to have come this far and to be able to represent uh, the team, represent Team Kenya. It's, it's, it's a real pleasure and an honor. Yeah, well done and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, testing wines, uh, I've been doing it for now almost five years. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's part of my job. I have to test the wines to be able to sell them. Um, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, you find uh, your hobbies and your passions meet with work. So it becomes fun and you get to enjoy it and enjoy the whole experience. Uh, Urban Wine House is uh, a wine house in the, in the CBD uh, on Queen Anger Street and it's, uh, we aim to be a, a wine shop that caters to every wine lover. So we have uh, wines from uh, all over the world. Uh, you have your new world wines, your old world wines, you have your bubbly and uh, we also have a selection of uh, spirits. Uh, everything that you can want, single malt whiskies, your scotch, blended scotch, your vodka and the like. And uh, our key point is to make it a learning experience whenever you come for a shopping experience. And that way you get to enjoy and become a better wine lover. Well, um, how I tend to take my beverages because uh, generally they are all beverages. So I usually go with phases. I have a vodka phase, I have a whiskey phase, I have a brandy phase. Uh, but even when it comes to wine, I'll have uh, one time I'm uh, drinking South African wines only, another time I'm drinking Australian wines. So it's, it depends on where your moods are or where you're feeling it. And then once you are there, you explore that. And then after a while, you want to try something new, get over that. And in terms of testing, it's uh, more or less the same. Because all you are doing is using your five senses. You use uh, your touch, your sense of hearing. You might ask me how that works, but you use your ears. No, when you're, when you're popping a champagne, you're using your ears. You can tell, even without seeing it, that's a bubble. You're using your touch. You are using your smell, uh, and it's it's a whole uh, full sense ex uh, experience, and you use all of that when you are judging a wine, experiencing a wine, and at the end of it, it's all about enjoyment. Right. Yeah. So uh, now that we're talking about uh, the f using your full senses, we've got with us on the table two different brands and bottles of wines. I don't know which is your favorite. Um, 
I prefer all kinds because for me wine is more of a, an, an experiential kind of a drink. So uh, there's a wine for every occasion. Uh, for my breakfast, I, like, I love my mimosas which, which go with the sparkling wines. Uh, yes. It's very healthy. And actually champagne goes very well with an English breakfast. Try it one time. And uh, the mimosas are basically the cocktail you use with the uh, orange juice and your bubble. That's a mimosa. Also, uh, probably try it from brunch, not breakfast. But champagne really does well with the uh, breakfast. With your eggs, your bacon and your, uh, your beans. Uh, after that, um, you also have the kind of wines when you're just chilling. Uh, having a conversation with someone, you want a wine that you just sip and enjoy, that doesn't require too much of your attention that you get the guys you're hanging out with. So like for example this rosé is, is a sipping rosé, I can still have it with my salads or my uh, seafood, but also it's the kind of wine you can have on its own. Uh, the red is uh, it's one, of my, one of my favorite reds that I've had. Um, and uh, uh, shout out to the to the to the lady to the ambassador Melissa. She has uh, introduced me to these wines, and uh, we've drank them, drank a few bottles with her. And uh, everything from the story behind it, because every wine is a story. Uh, uh, the name of the wine means a far place, and there's a whole story behind that, and it's it's an interesting story. But this is a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is uh, a bit fuller and a bit bigger. So I would uh, probably enjoy it when I'm having a sit-down meal because on its own I will, it will probably be too strong. Uh, but still, after a hard day at work, I might want to relax with a glass of that. So it's, it's all about the occasion because wine is for occasions. And uh, also the occasion determines how you perceive the wine. If you are having a bad day and I pour you a glass of this, every time you have a bad day and you see that wine, your mind tells you it's not a good wine. Uh, if I'm happy, we're having a party, and you have this wine, you'll always uh, have happy thoughts about that wine. So it's, it's experience, it's everything. So every single time, you have a glass. But most of the time, I prefer a wine I can drink every day, a wine I can get in the supermarket, or, or the local wine shop. But uh, most, of the, most of these wines, you'll find them already in the market, and they are easily accessible. And the good units of African wines, they are value wines. So you will always get good value at good quality. Yes. All right then, I'm curious to taste some of this wine. I don't know which one you'd recommend us to actually try out so that we can try it. And as we take it, perhaps you can share with me some of the health benefits of taking wine. Perhaps there are tons of benefits that we actually don't know uh, from home. So. For the, uh, I would like us to try this uh, Spia Chardonnay Pinot Noir. It is a blend. Uh, it has to be the Chardonnay is a white grape and the Pinot Noir is a red grape. So the, the pink color of this wine comes from the Pinot, from the Pinot Noir. And the way rosés are made is a bit special. They are light wine, easy wine. So the color of the wine, actually the red wine, you get the color from the skins of the grape. So think of it like making tea with a tea bag. You dunk your tea bag once, it gets a bit of color. You leave it to, to sit there for a while, it gets rich and gets bolder, even the taste gets bolder. So that's the easiest uh, way I can tell you how they come up with red wines and rosé wines. So for this, uh, Pinot Noir on its own is a very fantastic grape. Uh, Chardonnay, uh, for me it's my favorite white grape. So this is a fantastic blend, very crisp, very fresh and easy to drink and uh, like I mentioned it goes very well with your uh, seafood, uh, with a salad, a good salad and uh, on its own with good conversation, you will enjoy it. Um, also we have some different glasses, uh, with wine uh, you, you, have, you get the best out of it if you serve it in the best glass because every wine has its own characteristics. Um, I would say this is um, like when you're going to the office, you wear a suit. When you're going to the swimming pool, you wear appropriately. So it's the same with wine. Like for example, for a rosé, because it's a bit on the lighter side, you want all the flavors concentrated, so you'll go for a 
smaller bold glass. For a red wine, because you want it to breathe more, you'll use a bigger uh, a, bowl, a glass with a bigger bowl. Uh, for a champagne fruit, you are having it very slender and very tall. First of all, to make sure to concentrate the bubbles, because if I put if I pour a sparkling wine in this, the bubbles will dissipate quite quickly. And also in terms of presentation, it doesn't you don't get the full effect of seeing the bubbles in the glass and all that. Uh, so I'll use one of these glasses. Actually, if we were using a cork, when you we, when are pulling it out, it, does, it has that distinct popping sound, yeah. which for me, I take it is, uh, as a sound to begin fun, okay. start having fun. Right. Yes. So, it's, um, when you look at that wine, it's uh, also poor for you on that. This is one of the things they were testing uh, in the competition, service, and part of it is learning how to pour properly. Uh, if you noticed, I didn't do that. I also didn't touch the glass. I poured it nicely, finished, didn't spill. It, it all goes to how it's supposed to be done. Um, and also presenting the bottle. So like for example, this is a Spear Rosé, a blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. It's a 2018 vintage, meaning it's a uh, very very young which is how it should be drunk you should drink a rosé or most white wines as fresh as they are um, and uh, like i was saying use all your senses uh, start by sight look at it you can tell a lot by just looking at it first of all i can tell whether it's a red wine a white wine or a rosé i can tell um, and also by looking at the color i can tell whether it's a young one or an old one uh, by looking at it, you can you are able to judge which grapes are in there because one of part of the exam was also a blind testing where they just give you uh, uh, they just pour for you and you have to use your senses to try and decide try and decipher which wine has been poured. Uh, so use your scent. Is it clear? What color is it? Uh, you can even tell the amount of alcohol by looking at the legs and the tears it makes. The more viscous it is, the more alcohol in the wine. And then from there, use your nose. There's a lot, a lot of the testing we do is actually on the nose. That's why when you have a cold, you can't taste food. It almost tastes the same. So your nose is your key reference point. So when, when you're nosing the wine, put your nose in there. First thing that pops to your head, that's it. So very floral, um, lots of uh, fruit. Uh, you're getting some strawberries in there. Uh, you're getting some some citrus, something almost sweet, pineapple in there. Yes. And uh, the thing with this is a lot of practice. You are in the market there. You're smelling your oranges. You're smelling your pineapples. You're smelling all these things because you'll come across them in there. After that, you take a sip. While it's in your mouth, uh, if you remember your biology, you taste different things on different parts of your tongue. So swallow it in there, and then swallow, and then you're able to tell um, uh, what flavors you're getting. In white wines and in rosé wines, you're looking for acidity, uh, which is a good thing. It gives the wine backbone. In a red wine, you're looking for some of that acidity, but also you're looking for something called tannins, and which is the drying effect you get in the mouth. Uh, for uh, white wines and rosé wines, it's the opposite. The acidity causes your mouth to water. So, uh, some of that. And then when you, when you swallow it, uh, does it linger? Does it disappear? And you just want to take the next sip or you just want to relax and think about it? And then overall is the impression. Did you like it? Uh, did you not like it? For whatever reason. And uh, the thing, the beauty with the wine is uh, subjective. Because uh, if you've never smelled an apricot, if I told you there were apricots, you wouldn't know. Uh, so it's a uh, practice, very subjective. There are no wrong answers, but there are better answers in wine and when describing a wine. 
and uh, we try to describe them in the easiest possible way. So it's a rosé from South Africa, Stellenbosch, very crisp, very fresh, uh, good acidity in the mouth, good finish. I'd love to have it with you. First touch. Yes. Please. Lovely. Lovely one. The sweetness comes in uh, uh, from the Chardonnay because the way they make it is sort of a style of a riper Chardonnay. So you are getting hints of sweetness in there. But mostly it's, it is more on the dry side, more of an off-dry kind of wine. Yes, uh, well balanced. The acidity is not too much. Uh, and uh, when you talk about balance in a wine, we are talking about everything from the way it looks, from the nose, from the palate, from the way it goes down. So you can find a wine that is out of balance. Either the nose is too much, that doesn't translate uh, on the mouth. Uh, and some of that might be because of uh, serving it at the wrong temperature. You'll realize for white wines, rosé, serve it uh, at uh, chill them. For red wines, chill them a bit. Uh, we always say, room temperature in, in uh, France or South Africa or wherever is not the same room temperature in Nairobi. Even in Nairobi and Mombasa, room temperature is different. So you are aiming for a specific uh, temperature for that so that you can get the best out of it. If I serve it too warm, you don't get the alcohol and some things you will miss out. You serve it in the right temperature and it opens up and it, it, it's there. You can't mistake the flavors the aromas and all that. Yes. First question. Yes. Grapes. Uh, technically grapes are fruits, but they are all grapes. And that's the basic, the most basic level of a wine. Because the grape determines what the wine will be. So if you have your Chardonnay, yeah, you'll make Chardonnay wine. If you have your Cabernet Sauvignon, your Pinotage, uh, your Sauvignon Blanc, your Chenin, and these are, uh, they give the wine the base character. So like for example, Chardonnays are creamy, uh, they are full-bodied, uh, medium acidity, uh, and uh, on the other hand, a Sauvignon Blanc is more green, uh, higher acidity, uh, straight cutting and very crisp. So it's and sometimes what winemakers will do is try to blend. So you're getting the best out of this grape, uh, blend it with the best from this grape, and come up with the, with the whole new, new wine. Yes. Yes. Yes, we, we, we do have uh, actually a local winery and it's in uh, Naivasha, Leleshwa. Leleshwa is uh, our Kenyan success story um, and uh, one of the judges is the winemaker. Uh, she's called Emma, lovely lady. And uh, they are doing some good stuff. Uh, the Sauvignon Blanc won some uh, awards. And uh, actually I think two years in a row, if I'm not wrong, three. And it's it's uh, just in Naivasha um, and uh, they do organize some uh, mini tours of, of the vineyards and all that. So it's, it's one of those places uh, you want to go and see so that you don't have to go there to South Africa, to France, to actually see where the magic happens. Just drive over there, uh, you talk to them, they give you, tell you when you can visit and you, you learn a lot from, because most of the magic happens in the farm. Uh, the winemaker just picks the best, does finish it off, it off. Uh, so it's, it's a good place to go and see. And uh, personally, I'm very proud of the work they do over there. It's a Kenyan wine that's going places. And I'm looking forward to seeing what, they, what more they come up with. Yes. Alright, uh, so finally, let's find out how you've been to South Africa before. Are you excited about the wine talk? What's the one thing that you're definitely happy to see when you get down there? And, you know, comparing the wine culture in South Africa in comparison to Kenya? 
Well, um, South Africa, actually I've never been outside Kenya. So, on so many levels, this is, um, it's about four bucket list items on one, on one go. So, get out of Kenya, visit a vineyard, um, attend K-Point Festival, drink uh, hundreds of wines. Paradise, you can say. I also meet other guys because they'll be contestants from uh, nine different countries. So exchange experiences, learn what works for them, what works, and also it's a good uh, a good opportunity for me to share our Kenyan passion for wine. Uh, we are growing. Uh, other markets are more developed, so other, uh, some other contestants will be from more developed uh, uh, markets, but still. We believe in a good showing there, and I and I'm, I'm with the support of the rest of the team. Um, we call it the wine group. We are, we love each other. We've been working together for since forever, and we'll uh, with the support of everyone, we can give Kenya the best representation possible. And I'm really grateful for everyone. You learn learn something from everyone. Uh, and uh, even though some of them you compete uh, in the market, at the end of the day, you're all in the same industry and you have to come together, work on this, uh, help each other here and there, even in terms of lobbying, the government to give us uh, uh, for policy changes and all that that favor our, our industry. So it's, I'm, I'm going to be the face of the Kenyan team. And I'm humbled by that experience, and I give it my best shot. Yes. Uh, this one is off the hook. Are you taking a plus one with you on this trip? And if so, or if not, is it open? Who would you go with? I'm uh, trying my best. I, I hope I can take my wife with me. I, I, she couldn't be here today, but I called her, and she was screaming all over the house. And um, I hope the guys at South African Airways can uh, hook me up. They are the sponsors for the ticket, uh, so I hope uh, they can consider my plus one. It's always good to see the good things in life with uh, your significant other. Yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, thank you. Mr. Thank Sam, you. and we're really happy to have seen you actually carry the Kenyan flag all the way high up there. And thank we wish you all the best, and we really hope that you'll actually emerge the winner and the master sommelier in Africa. I, I will, that's my Great. Today we have had an exclusive event right here in Sierra Lounge in Yaya Center. So basically we have crowned Mr. Sam as our representative in Cape Town. Hopefully we'll come to you from Cape Town, South Africa to find out of the nine representatives from the different countries who will be the finalists. Stay tuned on the All Access Show where we get to find out exclusive events and happenings from Kenya and around the world. I've been your host, Lucy Riley.